Ukraine's ground assault on Russian soil was as audacious as it was unexpected. What was even more surprising, that for the past week they've held and apparently even advanced that ground assault. This is a map from the Institute for the Study of War, that's a Washington-based think tank, showing, based on public geolocated sources of information, how much ground Ukraine has potentially captured inside Russia. It appears to be at least hundreds of square kilometers. Ukraine's president says a thousand. Vladimir Putin has promised to squeeze Ukraine out of Russian territory to bring the fight back to them. But this has been going on for a full week now. Officials say as many as 180,000 Russians are being evacuated from near the border with Ukraine in the Kursk region. According to the region's governor, Ukraine now controls 28 Russian towns and villages. In neighboring Belgorod, the governor there also told residents in one district to leave. And look at his telegram posts from August 13th. Missile danger, missile danger, missile danger. Missile danger. The missile warning siren has been sounded again, but then, just a few minutes later, missile danger ended only to have another message pop up 24 minutes later. The missile hazard siren has been sounded again. And the entire territory of Belgorod is a missile danger. He then goes on to list civilian casualties and specific districts where buildings and homes were damaged. Plain that Russia was not expecting this incursion, and Ukraine planned very well for finding an area that would take Russia by surprise. So in a war where Russia has continuously been able to put Ukraine on its back foot, forcing it to surrender greater and greater swaths of territory over time, why has Russia been so far unable to decisively put down the Ukrainian force within its own borders? Well, the answer may lie somewhere between it can't and it won't. I'll explain. One hard lesson most experts agree Russia learned very early in the war was that it had drastically overestimated its own logistical capability. Ukraine's a big country, the biggest in Europe after Russia itself. Putin thought he could end the war within a matter of weeks. That was more than two years ago. Concerns are growing about how long the war will drag on and whether Ukraine will have enough weapons and soldiers to keep fighting. Russia has held the upper hand for most of that time, but it's hobbled by poor military planning, low combat readiness, and a lack of preparation. They're working with a lot of, uh, now they're, they're second, third, third rate equipment, uh, a lot of outdated uh, equipment as well. Um, and you're trying to transport this stuff in large troop movements um, across, across uh, all of Russia, uh, or Southern Russia at least, uh, and parts of Ukraine. Russian military bloggers have heavily criticized the fact that Ukraine seems to have caught Russia completely by surprise. The enemy has been gathering forces for two months. All the information flowed to the useless top headquarters for two months. There was more than enough time to make a decision. And from another military blogger, people at the front lines knew the enemy would definitely attempt to deliver such a blow, but then he appears to criticize military leadership, making decisions from afar, who did not believe it was possible. There's no doubt that it came as a surprise to Russia, and uh, Ukraine had done its intelligence work and plainly detected an area of the border where Russia would not be able to react swiftly. But then, of course, there's been chaos following the invasion as well. And this really spilled out into plain view recently, when Vladimir Putin held a meeting with a number of high-ranking officials and regional governors. You can think of it as kind of like a series of status reports where they relay their successes and their hardships. And one of the striking features about this conference that Putin held with the regional governors was how they were reeling off indicators that Russia really has not got a grip on the situation. They were talking about not being able to track their own military units. Now, I don't speak Russian, but I managed to track down the official English transcript direct from the Kremlin of this exact meeting. And the Kursk regional governor, where the bulk of Ukraine's offensive is taking place, did indeed say this exact thing. In terms of the issues we face, considering that the front line has become quite blurry there, we sometimes struggle to locate our combat units. 
Americans. Of course, Governor Alexei Smirnov goes on to mention other problems, missing volunteers, evacuation lists, thousands of names long, and the need to step up patrols to prevent looting by Russian citizens. These are just some of the signs that Russia's lagging response to Ukraine's attack may simply be because it has been unable to respond more quickly. But there are also difficult choices to make. A week ago, when Ukraine first pushed its forces through a largely undefended Russian border, Russia would have faced an immediate question. From where do we pull troops to push back this unexpected Ukrainian incursion? Early analysis from the Institute for the Study of War suggested the Russian military command appears to be relying on existing units deployed to the international border area and readily available forces in the rear. These are the soldiers most quickly able to respond to any threat because they're already nearby. But this hasn't been enough. So what do you do? This is the most recent data from the ISW showing the state of play in Ukraine. You can see the freshly contested territory within Russia's borders, but compare that to how much of Ukraine's territory Russia has managed to capture and hold. About 20% of the country in the south and the east. Now, Russia could divert forces away from these fronts, potentially ceding back ground in favor of defending its own territory. But that would be a huge operational undertaking, and Putin would have to make a difficult call. Does he stand to lose more by allowing Ukraine's incursion to continue, or should he press the theater-wide advantage that he has now? That hasn't had an effect on the front lines so far. In fact, Russia seems to have stepped up its attacks elsewhere, possibly in response to Putin saying that they had to do that. But of course, it's only a matter of time before Russia does manage to move reserves up. The bottom line, it appears so far, both from what experts tell us and from how Putin has responded to date, is that Putin has little interest in dropping everything to play whack-a-mole with Ukraine's forces. But this is where things get really complicated. Russia is having to evacuate civ civilians in the tens of thousands, in fact, hundreds of thousands from those border areas, which in itself poses a problem, because if you're seeding these people across the rest of Russia, they're bringing with them stories of the state's incapacity to protect them, of the fact that there was no military defense. There were no civil authorities actually making sure that the situation was was tenable within that area. And this is not the picture that Russia wants its citizens to hear about exactly what is going on with the war. One other difficulty for Putin has to do with an impossible balance. How do you portray Ukraine as a barbaric enemy, one who would dare to escalate the conflict by attacking Russians in their own homes, but without alarming a Russian population that you swore to protect from an enemy that you swore you would crush? Late last week, Russia's National Anti-Terrorism Committee announced a counter-terrorism operation framing the ground assault of a Ukrainian mechanized brigade as a simple terrorist attack. Putin called it a provocation. What he didn't do was say, this is war. In some ways, it's just a question of semantics. You don't want to call this an invasion of Russia itself, because that's a big, scary word, which will cause people to demand things like full mobilization of Russia, which is something that the Kremlin has been resisting up until now. Seeing Putin has delegated both the FSB and uh, the military to take simultaneous control over these and have almost overlapping priorities. So I think what that says to me is it suggests that there is not a clear uh, command and control. No clear command and control, meaning no decisive resolution to a daring attack Russia did not seem to think Ukraine was capable of. Putin has done everything he can do to minimize Ukraine domestically. There are two ways he wants to paint this to them that, you know, he doesn't want to lose domestic approval for this war. Um, he doesn't want Russians to live in fear with uh, the fact that he can't possibly protect them from foreign threats. All while making the case that the West is fighting Russia with the hands of Ukrainians. Because how Russia responds may very well have a big impact on how the rest of the world responds. Iran is reportedly preparing to ship hundreds of ballistic missiles to Russia. Meanwhile, U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham cheered Zelensky on from afar. When I think about Kursk, bold, brilliant, 
Beautiful. Keep it up. He would go on to say, Putin started this. Kick, Kick his, his ass. ass.